Hello everyone. Now we will start with a new topic as a part of a BAP programming. And our new topic is best performance guidelines or we can say best performance practices. What are the best performance guidelines we should always, always follow whenever we are writing the logic so that whatever the logic we are writing or whatever the program we are developing, it should give a good performance to the customer. Suppose simple example, I developed a program and someone else also developed same to same program. I developed a program, but I have not followed the best performance guidelines. My program is giving the output in 30 seconds and another person program is giving the output in suppose one or two seconds itself. It means customer will always, always prefer that program. We both have worked on same to same requirement. One has followed the best performance guidelines. Another has not followed the best performance guidelines. They both develop the same to same program. They both are getting the output. They both are getting the correct output. But customer always prefer that program which is giving the good performance. So yes, a good programmer is whenever they are writing the logic, they always follow the best performance guidelines. Now, Generally, whenever we ask people, just tell us what are the various best performance guidelines you followed. They sometimes gave the answer. We gave the internal table name starting with LT, work area name LWA, parameter P underscore, S, uh, select option S underscore. Those are not performance guidelines. Those are naming convention, best naming convention. Suppose simple, I gave the internal table name starting with LT. Someone else gave the internal table name, suppose AB or something. Is performance matters at that point of time? No, just simple, simple. Someone has followed the best naming convention and someone has not followed the best naming convention. So do not confuse these two things. If you are following the naming convention at that time, performance does not matter at all. Yes, sir. Performance matters. What is the meaning of performance? So performance means whatever the logic we are writing at that time, have we followed the best performance guidelines or not? Whenever I have written the query, whenever I have written the loop statements at that time, what are the best performance guidelines I followed given by the SAP. This is our topic. So never tell that we gave the name starting with LT, LWA. Those are naming convention. Best performance guidelines means whatever the logic you are writing, whatever the queries you are writing, whatever the if statement, loop statements you are writing, are they following the name? Are they following the practices given by SAP? This is our topic. Now we will start with all these practices one by one. And important, a good programmer is one who always, always asks, yes, that I am writing the logic is my logic is best. Whatever I am writing is according to SAP best performance guidelines or not. So we we'll start with our first best performance guidelines. What is first best performance guideline? Never use star in the query. Now, what is the meaning of star? Star means you are fetching the data of all the columns from the table. Suppose simple example. I will go for suppose a table, suppose name of the table is VBAK. It is SAP table. If you see this table has 156 column. Suppose we got a requirement that from this table, 
we want to display the output of suppose 20 columns. Now, suppose many people, what they will do, they will go for select star from which particular table, VPAK table, they will put data into internal table and they will display the output of 20 column. Just simple example. Whenever you are going for select star, it means we are fetching the data of how many column? 156 column. 156 column data we are bringing on to which particular layer? Application layer. And ultimately, we are displaying that data of how many column? Only 20 column. Just see when you bring that data of 156 column on the application layer, at that time, system performance will, will highly, highly impact at that point of time because application layer also has limited memory and you are bringing the data of so many columns on the application layer and that is not even required at all. Just now, by vice versa scenario. You only require 20 column data in the output. If you are bringing the data of only 20 column on the application layer, just see how much, how much less memory it will occupy at that point of time. And performance will not impact much. Performance will be good at that point of time. So never, never use star in the query. Always, always fetch the data of those columns only which are required. Suppose simple, a table has 10 columns and you require an output of 10 columns. You require an output of 8 columns. At that time still, we can understand that you only fetch the data of one or two extra columns. But if a table has 100 columns and you require 30, 40, 50 columns in the output, but you bring the data of all 100 columns on the application layer, that is never, never advisable. It is strictly, strictly prohibited. So always, always, may always fetch the data of only those columns which are required. If you see, whenever we have written the logic, see, this table, ultimately our order header table has very less number of columns. If I will go to order header table, it has five columns. If I will exclude MA and DT, still I mention the individual column. I have not even fetched the data of one extra column also. Yes. So always, always fetch that data of only those columns which are required. Avoid, strictly, strictly avoid star. Whenever you are going for star at that time, the performance will highly, highly impact because it's not required at all. Yes, sir. So always, always fetch only those columns which are required in the output. Now, we will go for second best practice. Column fetching sequence needs to be same as that of data dictionary column sequence. Whenever we have written the logic, we always follow this practice. Now, what is the second best practice? Column fetching sequence should be same as that of data dictionary column sequence. Now, if I will show you the fetching sequence, this is the query which we have written. And in the separate session, I will open the table also so that you can understand fully. This is my table. And this is the sequence of the columns which we are fetching. Select. What is first column? O and no. What is second column? O date. What is third column? PM, payment mode. Total amount not required. What is fourth column? currency. Have I followed the same to same sequence of data dictionary? Yes. So this query has a good performance, good performance. Suppose if rather than writing the query in this way, 
if I will write the query in this way, suppose I am writing O number, then I am just moving payment mode first, order date third. And while declaring the structure also, I will change the sequence. Suppose payment mode is at the second position and order date is at the third position. Now this query, this query has less performance as compared to this query, as compared to this query. Because in this query, I have not followed the sequence as that of data dictionary. So in this query, there the sequence is matching with data dictionary itself. But here, the sequence is not matching with data dictionary. But is what, firstly, what is there? Firstly, order number is there. Then you are directly fetching what? Payment mode. You are directly fetching payment mode. Then you are fetching what order date. It means SAP has to come back and check for order date. Now, what is the fourth column? Then SAP has to come on to CURR. So yes, always, always, whenever you are writing the query, always make a practice that you will follow the same sequence as that of data dictionary. Now we will go for third best performance practice. So this is not a best performance practice. I will go for next best performance practice. This is our order number, order date. What is our third best practice? The where condition should have same sequence as that of data dictionary column sequence. If you are going for where condition at that time also, you should follow the same sequence as that of data dictionary. Suppose simple. In our current scenario, I have only only one where condition that is order number. Suppose I am going for one more where condition. Suppose, suppose I am writing and payment mode is equal to C. Suppose I gave one more condition, one more condition, where condition in the query. If you see in the where condition, order number is first and payment mode is second. If I will show you the table, my order header table, just check this table. Based upon the data dictionary sequence, is order number is first? Yes, order number is first. Then we have payment mode in the sequence. Yes, we have payment mode in the sequence. So this query has a good performance. It's good performance query. Now suppose if I will write the query in this way. Suppose I'm writing payment mode is at first position and order number is at the second position. This query has less performance as compared to the previous query because I have not followed the sequence as that of data dictionary. So in this case, what is firstly you mentioned payment mode. Firstly, you mentioned payment mode. Then what you mentioned? Then you mentioned order number. Then SAP has to come on to what? Order number. So this query has less performance as compared to previous query. So whenever you are going for where condition, always, always follow the same sequence as that of data dictionary. So this query has good performance as compared to the previous query. So what we studied, studied in this particular video or what is the summary of the video? In this video, we started with best performance guidelines and it is a always a technical person responsibility. A good technical person is whenever they are writing the logic, they should always, always follow the best performance guidelines so that whatever they are developing, it will give a good performance. So never tell that LT, LWA, S underscore P underscore R best performance practices. Those are only best naming conventions. 
So as a part of best performance guidelines, we covered three practices in this particular video. What is first one? Never go for star in the query. Star means you are fetching the data of all the column. Never bring the data of all the columns on the application layer. Always fetch the data of only those columns which are required. Second best practice, whenever you are going for the select query, whenever you are fetching the data of the column, always, always follow the same sequence as that of data dictionary sequence. But the third best practice we followed, your where condition of the query must have the same sequence as that of data dictionary. In the next video, we will learn few more best performance practices. So that's it in this video. Thank you.